Okay, so maybe I shall start. Good morning, everybody. Good afternoon to is joining from China. My name is Alessio Petino. I'm the knowledge coordinator of the EU SME Center in Beijing. It's a great pleasure to welcome you today to this webinar um, about product safety and conformity assessment for consumers' goods um, in China. Uh, it's, it's a great pleasure to, to welcome a very senior and experienced speaker uh, for this webinar today. Um, to guide us through this very complex um, sector full of standards, full of different technical regulations. And, and the speaker, what we will learn today is basically how to navigate through this, how to find relevant information, how to find the relevant standards you have to be compliant with. And we are also going to have a few case studies um, at the end. Um, before starting, I would like to spend a few minutes on introducing the USME Center. Um, yeah. The USME Center is a project funded by the European Commission since 2010, and our mission is to help European SMEs to get ready to do business uh, with China or in China, um, to get to know China and, and, and to be prepared when, when doing, when doing uh, business with China. Um, we are in, a third, in the third phase, um, run by a consortium of five chambers of commerce and business organizations, which you can find here uh, at the bottom of this slide. And there is going to be a next phase, another phase in the next month. Um, and this means that the USME Center is going to be around for a few years uh, more. So, so we hope um, you can refer to us when you seek information about uh, different aspects of doing business with China. We partner up with many organizations, both from government and business, and we operate out of a physical office in Beijing, which is where I am now. Um, so very short, very briefly, we provide four main types of services. The first one is what we call knowledge center. Basically, we write reports, guidelines, case studies on different um, sectors, different aspects, uh, both uh, vertical sectors, but also cross-cutting issues like, like, like today, standards, conformity assessment. Um, you can access the knowledge center from the website. You see, this is a screenshot of our website and there will be, um, you know, all, all the publications uh, will be displayed there. Second service is uh, an advice center. It's basically a sort of help desk that um, the that, that companies, SMEs or business uh, organizations can use to ask any technical questions uh, they might have, um, including, for instance, uh, my product is stuck at the customs, what should I do? Or um, uh, you know, even um, how, how to register my product on the on the website of the Chinese customs and, and things like this. We have experts that will answer these questions for free for you. Um, we have, um, you know, also a database of frequently asked questions. We also have a self-diagnosis tool, which I would like to uh, show you very quickly how it works. It's basically a quiz uh, based on, on a set of questions, multiple choices questions, which will basically test you test your 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 um how ready you are to 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 do um to export to china to enter the chinese market and based on the answers that you select at the end you will get a score which is a, a tailor uh, which is tailor made based on, on the answers and you will um you will receive an explanation of the questions as well as links to other existing resources that we have um it's very short uh, five to ten minutes um i really invite you to to try it um third service that we have is a training center so basically it's sort of what we're doing today we invite we organize webinars workshops where we invite speakers to um, train you on, on different aspects um and 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 by the way all the trainings we do we record them and upload them on our youtube channel and you can hear you can watch uh, rewatch all the recordings of previous webinars and it is going to be the same for today's uh, training uh, after 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 today tomorrow in in the next few days we will upload the recording of this uh, on our YouTube channel so you can rewatch it again. Uh, and last we have an advocacy platform, which is basically um, a group a sort of working group um, that we have through which we disseminate information about new regulations, drafts for comments. Um, or where we organize uh, meetings uh, workshops about new policies. Um, that's pretty much it. Um, maybe an overview of what's coming next. Uh, May is going to be a pretty busy month for us. Um, this is, these are just a few events we are doing. 
Uh, we're doing one for mental fitness, which is a very hot topic recently, considering all the, um, the many restrictions that uh, many companies are, and people are experiencing in many cities in China. But we're also going to have um, one on cybersecurity on the 24th, another one on commercial is not in this list, but um, it's, it's going to be on the on our website soon. Another webinar on the 25th on commercial disputes resolution, um, another one on supply chain in Guangzhou and so on. So you will find all details on our website as well as on LinkedIn or, or, or social media channels. Um, yeah, so now I think we can move into, into, the, into the webinar. It's a great pleasure to, to introduce to you Dr. Paddy Xu, who is a senior consultant, very renowned consultant in the field of technical regulations and standardization in China. She has many, many, many years of experience in the industry. Uh, first a software hardware developer in IT automation company, R&D leader in a big, very big household appliance company. By the way, we're going to, to talk about household appliance today. Um, and, and standardization and technical regulations direct, director at Siemens. She has also been the director of a very interesting project co-funded by the European Commission, as well as other standardization bodies such as Etsy and Senelec, called Seconded European Standardization Expert in China, or CESEC uh, in short. And um, yeah, she has uh, this project uh, used to promote dialogue and exchanges on standardization between the EU and China. Betty was the director, so she she's a very renowned um, expert in the field uh, who has, by the way, joined uh, a few webinars before uh, of, of the USME Center. So we are very happy to have you again with us, Betty. Um, so, so yeah, I think um, I'll stop here. I'll give the floor to you and um, thank you again for being with us today. Uh, yes, thank you, Alessio, for, for, your, for your introduction. And uh, now I will uh, share my screen. Uh, Can you see the screen now? Yes. Wonderful. Okay. So, uh, good morning for the uh, European audience uh, in, in in Europe and those who are and, and good afternoon for those who are based uh, in China. And uh, uh, my name is Betty Xu, and as uh, Alessio has already been introduced, I'm working in China. Uh, for many years on the uh, China standardization and conformity assessment and China compliance uh, issues. Uh, and it is a great honor for me to be invited by EU SME Center to make uh, some introduction about the uh, product safety and conformity assessment uh, of the consumer products for China and to help the European uh, small and medium uh, enterprises uh, to uh, understand the Chinese uh, product safety uh, systems and also the compliance issues uh, and to uh, better uh, prepare to be be better prepared to uh, into the uh, to to uh, exporting their products uh, to China and today uh, our uh, presentation will cover six uh, sessions uh, first we would like to introduce some uh, market uh, situations uh, for the China consumer products, uh, and then we focus more on the regulatory environments for consumer products, uh, the main elements in China's uh, product safety systems, uh, and some horizontal certification schemes, which are very important uh, for the European uh, SMEs uh, who produce consumer products uh, and also who wish to uh, uh, ship their products or exporting their products to China. Uh, and also we will give some practical guidance of uh, how to easily uh, navigate the compact systems and find the right way to, um, uh, to do the compliance, to do the certification and to fulfill the China market access requirements. Uh, and uh, last, we will make two case studies. Uh, so to help the um, uh, European SMEs uh, or, or manufacturers to understand uh, the system uh, and be uh, better prepared, uh, um, um, prepare their products to uh, enter Chinese market. Uh, first, the uh, market for consumer products in China. When we talk about consumer products, sometimes there are different definitions or different understandings. So here in China, uh, 
the definition for consumer products uh, come from the uh, an ISO uh, standards. Uh, this this uh, the standards has been adopted identically in China, uh, which is named as a consumer product safety guideline for uh, suppliers. So the definition is not quite unified, but when we talk about consumer products, we always reference uh, these standards and also uh, some of the regulations also uh, have uh, a little bit um, uh, make the different uh, 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 definitions on that. But basically, consumer products are, are, are products designed and produced primarily for, but not limited to personal use, including uh, its uh, components, parts, accessories, instructions, and the packagings. And in another, um, uh, in another uh, um, regulation, in term, uh, the uh, on the uh, administration of recall of consumer goods, uh, this is a particular uh, regulation on the product recall for consumer products. And here they define the consumer products as uh, the for the purpose of those uh, provisions. Consumer goods means products need to be purchased and used by consumers for living consumption. So the, in the regulation, the definition is quite uh, simple, uh, but uh, um, usually we uh, reference the ISO standards uh, with uh, more, uh, more information. And also in this particular standards, uh, we also have another classification and code for the consumer products, uh, which referred to another Chinese standards uh, GBT 36431, uh, classification and code of consumer products. We have to see that these standards do not have the uh, ISO standards. It is not uh, identical adoption of any ISO and IEC standards or EN standards. It is a purely Chinese standards with purely Chinese definition and purely Chinese uh, classification and code system. So in general, the consumer products are divided uh, with 11 categories. Uh, it includes the culture, education, and the sporting goods, uh, and also um, household appliances and electronic, electrical accessories, electronic products, and IT products, uh, like computer, digital products, or the uh, communication products, mobile phone, uh, earrings, uh, 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 watches, uh, and, and, and other IT products, and children products, toys, and children clothes, furniture, decorating and refurbishing materials, uh, apparel and household textiles, uh, household chemicals and hygiene products like a detergent uh, or, dish, uh, or, or dishwashing uh, detergents, and food-related products, not food, but food-related products and also non-motor vehicles, including bicycles and their accessories. And uh, the uh, electrical bicycles is also belong to uh, this uh, category and also other daily necess necessities and other products. Uh, all these products are classified and with their code. So when we talk, uh, uh, usually Chinese use this uh, classification and the code uh, for the future refer ref references for the uh, particular uh, regulations or laws or, or managements for particular sessions and also for the particular market surveillance uh, requirements. So the overall of the market, first, we both know that China has been developed very uh, fast during the last 10 years. And uh, the figure from UN Trade shows that first, the China is one of the largest and fastest growing market for consumer products worldwide. Uh, from two, two, 2000, uh, 2000 to 2020, to 2020 uh, we can see that the consumer products uh, imported to China has been increased uh, from, uh, from a 10 billion, from less than paying US dollars to now uh, 70 uh, billion uh, US dollars. And also the um, uh, the percentage of uh, consumer products imported to China uh, has uh, increased from uh, uh, less than 2.5% to 4.3%. 4, 4, 4, 4. 
uh, and also another research shows that China has a very rapid uh, middle class increase uh, during last uh, uh, 10 years. Uh, middle class increase means that the Chinese people uh, are, will need more uh, high quality and high profile uh, products, and which means that uh, more imported uh, products, especially consumer products, uh, can be uh, can be obtained, should be obtained in the next two, three years. Uh, it also means that there will be a lot of uh, opportunities uh, for the European manufacturers for consumer products uh, to have their uh, market share in China. And also for the uh, European SME, uh, SME uh, enterprises, um, it is uh, also a very good opportunity because uh, always the uh, uh, European small and medium enterprises uh, produce high quality and more, uh, more uh, innovative products. Uh, and China uh, consumers and the middle classes uh, consumers uh, will need more uh, such kind of uh, products in the future. So uh, what is the market for the consumer products in China? Uh, first, uh, there are some uh, basic product requirements. First, language. Uh, every product sells in China, inside China, need the Chinese language label. So, uh, but for the consumer products, they even uh, need more uh, documents. For example, the uh, user's, user's manual, uh, the label of the products, uh, and also the uh, other information are, ne are all need to be in Chinese language. And also IP protection, the, uh, uh, when entering Chinese market, uh, the SME, uh, the, the small and medium enterprises to think about their trade and uh, their patent and uh, their other, other IP uh, uh, protection issues. And localization, that means that uh, you have to design some products that uh, are attractive to the uh, Chinese consumers. Uh, so to make some tailor-made, uh, uh, some products tailor for uh, the Chinese market. Uh, and also compliance, uh, the Chinese customers expect the imported and foreign brand, especially the high profile European uh, consumer products to uh, not only fulfill the uh, Chinese um, regulations, but also with uh, uh, fulfill the higher uh, profile EN or overseas standards, which means from their concept, the imported uh, uh, products uh, from Europe means high quality and better performance. And the market access requirements is obviously a must to consider before you put your products into Chinese market. So you have to, for the consumer products, the uh, manufacturers need to uh, get certain certifications or sometimes some license and to uh, make sure their products fulfill the compulsory Chinese standards uh, before putting their products uh, into Chinese market. Uh, the last is uh, the, the customs requirements. Uh, you have to understand uh, when you do the declaration of customs, whether your products are subjected to the inspection or comedy uh, uh, testing or, or other uh, requirements in case that you uh, meet the problems or have to um, or have to give up your products uh, when uh, after it shipped to China and it was uh, blocked by the customer. So those are the basic requirements to be considered. And today we will just focus on the last three, the compliance, market access, and some customer requirements, uh, who, which will uh, mostly uh, concentrate on the consumer product safety in China. Other requirements. Uh, first, we, have, uh, we, we need to have one concept, that is a Chinese market in generally is a unified market. So uh, the when, once your products enter Chinese uh, uh, customer, it can be sold uh, anywhere in the Chinese uh, territory. However, there are still some regional differences. So for some uh, high, uh, quick development or, or, or high profile or, or economic, uh, uh, high economic uh, areas like Beijing, Shanghai or Shenzhen, sometimes they have additional standards. They have a higher requirements for the products. 
and also some um, uh, different administration uh, administration uh, procedures uh, would apply for different uh, provinces or different cities. Uh, for example, even some of the customers who have different requirements, when you uh, enter Chinese market in Shanghai or in Tianjin, sometimes you may see different uh, uh, checking procedures or other administrative uh, procedures. Uh, and also there are some very uh, uh, variations in the um, understanding or interpretation uh, of the compliance requirements for different uh, provinces. Uh, believe me, this is not only the um, uh, foreign uh, manufacturers uh, would be a uh, headache on such issues. Uh, some local Chinese uh, companies are also uh, worrying about and uh, very um, uh, do not uh, uh, very bothered by such uh, very variations in different uh, cities or uh, different provinces. Uh, and also some of the uh, incoming goals by the customers authorities are, are, are a little bit different. So this is a, a something we may meet and we just to give you a reminder that uh, uh, before you're putting some Chinese market, China is uh, still, although China is a developed uh, country, but there's still some untransparency or uncertainty issues in China. For example, uh, we both read the news that uh, in Shanghai, it is um, uh, like a 40 days lockdown. If you uh, see such uh, for, because of the pandemic and also China, other areas may have the harbor uh, closure or the customer do not uh, work or do the inspection and your products need to be uh, stay in, in, the, in the carrier for another 10 days uh, or or the shipment is not uh, quiet uh, in time. So there's a lot of, uh, although Chinese market is very, um, very attractive and very, um, there's a big uh, opportunities for the manufacturers, uh, but you still have uh, something keep in mind that there are some uncertainties, uh, uh, especially in current uh, global uh, situation. And the, now we focus more on the regulatory environment uh, for China, especially for the consumer products. Uh, the regulatory authorities are government agencies who set up the uh, re requirements of uh, uh, market access and also some uh, compulsory certification. And also they decided who will do what and uh, according what kind of uh, uh, regulations or laws. Uh, first, on the left hand side, it is uh, more for the uh, internal market, the uh, after the products are uh, in, uh, entered into Chinese market, it will be have the uh, similar requirements or market surveillance uh, requirements uh, with uh, local products. Uh, so as AMR state administration of market regulation will be the key uh, regulators, uh, they will uh, the SAC stand, China standardization administration uh, will make the standards, the, the consumer product standards, uh, their affiliated or subordinate institutions or technical committees uh, will make compulsory standards and voluntary standards for the consumer products. Another department is, uh, and SAMR, is a department of uh, product quality and safety supervision and regulation. This department uh, will produce the market surveillance uh, schemes and also mm, and also manage the local SAMR on the uh, market surveillance or post uh, market supervision. And they produce similar systems like EU REVIC systems, uh, which we will show uh, based on quarterly uh, frequency, like uh, how many products has been sampled and checked by the government and which uh, products are not uh, uh, qualified for the safety requirements and some do, uh, and which uh, company uh, need to record their products and they will also name, nominate, uh, name those uh, companies who do not fulfill the compliance requirements in China. Another department is a CNSA, China National uh, Conformity Assessment uh, uh, administration and uh, uh, conformity assessment and uh, uh, accreditation uh, committee. They make the certification schemes for all the products uh, uh, 
uh, for, for general products in China. Uh, for example, consumer products are definitely belong to the general products. Uh, those um, products in particular sectors, for example, the train uh, belong to MOT, uh, Ministry of Transportation, and the uh, aviation products are obviously belong to other departments. So for consumer products, uh, it is mainly managed by SAMR. And there are some other uh, departments, for example, some special equipments will be managed uh, 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 as well by this department. But today we, because we focus only on consumer products, so we focus only on SAC, on the market surveillance, and on the certification scheme, CNCA. And in the, in the, in the customer or the, in the importing uh, uh, importing uh, process, uh, the the general administration of China customer uh, is a is a is a regulator to set up how to check the uh, uh, comedy inspection and how to do the uh, customer uh, inspection. So uh, the uh, departments uh, and the GACC and the, the uh, subordinated institutions national wide uh, custom inspection and also community inspection. And only if they issued the green light, uh, the products can finally enter Chinese market. And now we focus on the Chinese uh, uh, inside market again for the regulatory environment. Uh, the standardization related organization, as we mentioned, uh, is uh, general uh, for the uh, general consumer products, uh, SAC, and, and SAC CNIS, China National Institution of uh, Standardization, uh, because they have a special uh, technical committee of consumer product safety, uh, uh, TC. And also CNCA is a certification scheme maker which will make some uh, CC certification schemes like CCC, like China Energy Labeling, like China, China Rose, and like uh, some other uh, uh, China Green products or similar uh, uh, certification schemes. And the certification and accreditation organizations are seen as China National Accreditation uh, a uh, 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 accreditation uh, system and also CCAA uh, and also in the middle of the uh, column there are many certification bodies like CQC, like C, uh, CQM, like CCIC and etc. So you, if your products are in the category of uh, China compulsory certification, you have go. You have to go to the certification body and get the uh, certificate, certificate, and also the certification uh, marks, and then you can uh, freely uh, enter Chinese market. But there are also some specific uh, sector specific organizations who may have um, uh, more detailed requirements. Uh, for example, China Sporting Goods uh, Federation, uh, China Household Electric uh, Application uh, Appliances Association, uh, China Plastic uh, Processing Industry Association, China Toys uh, Association. Uh, China tried to make unified certification for consumer products. So basically, 90% of the, the consumer products uh, can fund their certification. Uh, requirements on the CNCA website, like CCC, like regulation, but still, uh, because there are so many uh, uh, different categories of consumer products, different uh, uh, sectors may also have uh, uh, more requirements you have to check uh, based on your products and on your sectors. And now we, we, we will talk about the product safety systems. Uh, the main elements in China product uh, safety, especially the consumer product safety requirements. Uh, first, uh, there is no product safety law in China uh, because China used the product quality law to fulfill such requirements. Um, I have to say that in China in the previous time, the quality and product safety 
uh, they do not have the uh, very clear uh, definition or differences. Chinese uh, uh, authorities or Chinese regulators sometimes always uh, uh, confused with the product quality uh, with uh, product safety. So we can see, that's why we can see sometimes some product performance standards are compulsory in China, while in Europe, we only make the regulation for the product safety requirements. And then second, we talk about the China compulsory and voluntary standards. Compulsory standards in China is technical regu regulation, and you have to uh, comply such uh, requirements. And the voluntary standards is uh, voluntary, but you have to check whether in China uh, you have to fulfill such requirements because uh, it may be referenced by some uh, certification schemes. Uh, and then the uh, certification and the licensing like CCC and also the uh, in the culture, um, the import and export committee uh, inspection uh, and customs uh, inspections, market surveillance and product recall for consumer goods. Uh, so these seven elements uh, make a comprehensive and rather complicated uh, China product safety systems. Uh, and we have to check and find out and then uh, uh, navigate the way of uh, 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 comply with the Chinese market requirements, uh, uh, market access requirements. First, China per quality law. Uh, the scope of uh, China quality law covers all the uh, processed or manufactured or, or manufactured products for sale. Uh, that's why definitely consumer products are under the scope of uh, product quality law. Uh, and in this uh, uh, quality law, it regulates, it's similar like the uh, European Product Liability Directives and General Product uh, Safety Directives, uh, GDPR, uh, uh, but uh, we, it is not 100% uh, same, uh, but we can find the responsibilities of uh, the manufacturers and the vendors. Uh, and also it says that forgery, uh, misstatements of origin, uh, fraudulent use of uh, authentic, uh, authentic, um, authentic marks and other uh, producers' names uh, are all prohibited. And if it is found, it, there will be to be fulfilled. Uh, and the vendor or the manufacturer uh, is um, uh, obliged to repair the products uh, or, uh, or, or refund the, the purchasers or the consumers uh, if the product uh, does not meet the requirement to uh, uh, compliance uh, requirements. Uh, and also um, how to define the defectives, uh, it is also, um, also regulated uh, in the law. Uh, and the, the detailed uh, consumer products recall uh, uh, regulation uh, is for the regulated for how to recall the products and also the penalty. Uh, the penalty of long compliant products uh, are regulated and this law as well. So uh, it's related to, to the uh, um, fine um, and also uh, the uh, close of the uh, manufacturers uh, and canceling of the business uh, lessons, uh, but fortunately, uh, it is uh, not related to to uh, to, to crime uh, to crime law yet. Uh, but because the product quality law is under revision, it is also discussed uh, the heavy um, heavy fine and also some uh, criminal uh, punishment could be uh, introduced to the new uh, product uh, uh, quality law. Uh, and also for the products imported to China, uh, it should be uh, have no reasonable, unreasonable threat to personal safety or the safety of the property, and it need to conform to existing standards 
for human health, personal safety or safety of property. Uh, and also it need to uh, conform to the standards indicated on the product themselves. So in here, we can see that in China, there's a regulation to see that each of the products you have to you have to indicate uh, the standards on your products or on the products uh, packages. So usually the uh, products produced in Europe uh, uh, mark the ISO and IEC standards, which is not allowed. You have to find uh, the um, similar or co corresponding Chinese uh, standards, uh, or uh, or you do not uh, indicate uh, it on your on your package. Uh, and also marks on the products uh, should be uh, authentic uh, and it will show the certification if you you have uh, got the certification and also you have to make the name of the products and the name and address of the producers in Chinese languages uh, and also other necessary information uh, for for all this we can find the law and there is a very detailed requirements on how to mark your products and how to do the packaging and how to uh, make the uh, user menu in Chinese language. Uh, so that's, uh, and also you have to indicate the production date and the expiring date uh, of your products. Mm, and also some warnings uh, if uh, it is necessary, uh, if it is indeed to the personal safety or the property. And China product uh, quality law covers all the general products, especially consumer products. But apart from the product quality law, enterprises shall also obey uh, by the sector specific laws, for example, the food packaging laws, uh, cosmetics labeling requirements, uh, the, uh, the, the uh, children, uh, uh, the toil, um, Mark, uh, marking uh, the toil labeling requirements uh, and the children clothing requirements. Uh, so this uh, uh, product of quality law can be regarded as a GDPR, uh, as a, a general product safety directives in Europe and uh, specific requirements we also apply for specific products. Standards, standards in China are of uh, uh, great importance. In China, the mandatory standards is uh, very heavy. It is uh, uh, the importance of government standards far out with uh, that of market standards. There are a lot of uh, compli uh, com uh, complicated China standardization systems with mandatory national standards, voluntary national standards, sector standards, local standards. And on the left hand, it is market driven standards made by associations or the industry feder federations like association standards, enterprises standards, and also consortia standards. And the, um, the uh, Chinese standards uh, are top-down systems and uh, bottom-up uh, bottom approaches, uh, but for the uh, small and uh, medium enterprises, we focus more on the compliance uh, requirements so if you ask me, I will see that mandatory national standards is very important. And then you should check the voluntary national standards and sector standards. Only if it is uh, quite obvious and quite different, you need to uh, also check the local standards. Uh, once your products fulfill the right-hand government-led standards, uh, you will be fine for the Chinese uh, market access requirements. And how to find the Chinese uh, uh, standards? We have the number, like a GB, GB standards is compulsory. GB slash T standards is voluntary. And also the year and also the number. And we also have uh, another 67 sector standards. For example, the uh, AQ is a workplace safety. The BB is packaging. So if your, your products need to be packaged, you may also check some standards in this sector. Uh, and also for some uh, like uh, uh, 2022, uh, 2020, uh, the uh, uh, 
uh, 20, uh, the uh, GB standards, which is a machinery standards and uh, uh, communication standards. Uh, and WS is a sanitary standards. There's a lot of standards. It's quite difficult for the small and uh, medium enterprises to figure out. And we give more uh, hints or tips in the, in the later requirements. And for another two, three very important standards for consumer uh, uh, are listed here. We have already uh, discussed in the previous sections, which are the uh, classification and the code of consumer products and consumer product safety, the guidelines for the suppliers. Uh, you can check this for the horizontal and general requirements. Uh, on the other hand, there are also some other compulsory and voluntary standards. For example, uh, the GBT uh, 41007, Consumer Product Safety Guideline for Characterization and Exportion Assessment of uh, Chemical Hazard. Uh, it is more for like uh, the chemical chemical uh, per chemical uh, substances uh, in the consumer products. How how many uh, what kind of uh, chemical can be used and um, how much chemical substances uh, should be can be uh, used in the consumer products and also the uh, risk assessments and also the consumer products recall number and rules and applications and the consumer products uh, uh, recall uh, risk assessments for electronic and electro uh, elec uh, electrical applications uh, and also the, the other requirements for example generally labeling for cosmetics uh, and also radiology protection uh, and also the uh, the indoor decoration and refurbishment materials. Uh, it is a uh, compulsory standards. You name it all. There's a lot of uh, because uh, there are eleven categories of uh, consumer products. So there are a lot of uh, uh, consumer product standards. And we can see that the thirty out of these uh, forty three national voluntary standards for consumer products. Uh, are made by TC508, uh, which is the uh, Consumer Products uh, Safety Technical Committee. Uh, but I still strongly recommend we check the specific uh, sector standards. For example, if you are a, a toil manufacturer, you have to check uh, not only the horizontal consumer products, uh, um, consumer product safety requirements, but also the safety requirements for the toys or the uh, uh, chemical subsidence um, uh, requirements for the toys, or the uh, labeling requirements for the toys, or any other sense for toys. So you check the toys, the toys technical committee and find the relevant standards or the requirements. And the certification. Uh, China compulsory certification is the must for consumer products. Uh, and also China compulsory energy labeling and China rules. Uh, WEEE, which is used for the uh, washing machine, refrigerator, household appliances, uh, and lessons for telecommunication equipment. For example, if your products have a Bluetooth system or a radio uh, or, or remote control system, you have to get the lessons of that. And also green product certification and other voluntary certifications. It is not like in, Euro in Europe, we have CE marking, which cover all the different certifications or directives or different requirements or, or regulations. In China, the certification and compliance requirements and compulsory standards are separated. Uh, you have to figure out uh, which certifications your products need. And uh, the uh, import and export committee inspection. Uh, it is uh, there is a category of import and export committees subject to compulsory inspections. So before you enter your uh, Chinese market, if you for if your products falling into this category, you have to do the compulsory comedy inspection. But fortunately, most consumer products do not need to do this 
because they are not listed in the category. Why I listed here? Because consumer products are wide range of, uh, of uh, uh, products. I do not know whether your products are need to do uh, are, are falling into this category or not. That's why I list it here to remind you to check before you uh, ship your products or, or, or make your exporting plan. To buy. And who will do this? The compulsory committee inspection uh, is, is done compulsorily by the agency uh, uh, nominated or designated uh, by the government. So don't worry, if your products are falling in this uh, category, they will also tell you the uh, uh, inspection agencies. Uh, and um, if your products do not need the, uh, do not need the committee inspection, then you can go to the uh, custom directly. And then you, your products are subjected to the customs inspection. So there is a law named administrative uh, measures of customers. So they will act with the inspection uh, based on your products and based on the, uh, on the classification and the price and uh, uh, the producing areas of committee. Uh, Europe uh, and China do not have the free trade, uh, free trade agreement yet. Uh, but for example, the IECP, uh, the RCEP uh, countries or those countries who sign the uh, free trade agreement, uh, your products may not need to do the custom inspection or, or, or the frequency are not very high. But basically, this is uh, also something you need to consider, uh, but nothing we can do because it's uh, random and also it is a sample time testing. And also the custom inspections, uh, the inspection is uh, uh, free of charge and I list the, uh, the process here. Uh, you can receive the noti notice, you need to do the, you need to, send, uh, you need to submit application. Uh, anyway, after you make the custom declaration, your products subject to custom inspections. Then after the products into Chinese market, the product safety issues will be managed by the market surveillance. Uh, the frequency, uh, uh, we, we, uh, I mentioned here is that we need to know that your products do not need to be, um, uh, to, to do the market surveillance uh, twice uh, in six months. So if you have been uh, asked by the local SAMR to do the, uh, checking uh, three weeks, uh, three months, um, every three months, you definitely can go to the SMR to make your complaints. And the consequences of non-compliant products. Uh, in the customer, if in the custom, if your product do not fulfill the Chinese requirements, the custom will refuse your products into Chinese market. After you into uh, uh, after you enter to Chinese market, if you do not fulfill the requirements, uh, they will have the immediate ban, and it will uh, make the announcement of a uh, uh, disqualification to the public, and they can also uh, revoke the business license and shut down your factory or shut down your uh, your 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 distributor's shop. So the um, uh, the re uh, rectification cannot meet the requirements uh, means that the consequence will be level up. So uh, I, I think it's similar with Europe for the market surveillance um, and you have to uh, coordinate with the local SAMR to avoid uh, the heavy uh, fine or the, or the heavy punishments uh, from the uh, market surveillance. Uh, in, uh, in this point, you have to work with your distributor to avoid such problems. Recall of consumer products. Uh, after, uh, even if your products fulfill all the uh, compulsory requirements, there's still a danger or the risk uh, of making uh, the uh, product safety issues. Uh, in this, uh, um, sometimes uh, in this situation, 
uh, a recall is quite necessary. Um, some examples is uh, IKEA products, uh, uh, the, the furniture, uh, which fulfill most of the requirements, but still uh, cause some dangers to the to the human uh, health and human lives. Uh, then it re will relate it to some recall systems. Uh, in China, we have the um, uh, uh, automotive uh, recall systems and also the uh, consumer goals recall administration. Uh, it is an interim uh, provision, and uh, we have to see that because uh, uh, the the cars, when you sell the cars, you always uh, uh, write down or register the customer's name, that, that their contact details, and their addresses. So it is quite easier to make the product recall. But for the consumer products, it has been sold to the general consumers and to the general publics. You cannot identify who buy your, who who bought your products who didn't. So under this uh, and such situation, it is quite possible that the recall system, the recall uh, process, uh, uh, obviously or no doubt or, or or have to go to the public, uh, which is a big um, reputation damage for the. Um, manufacturers. Uh, that's why you have to uh, make sure that your products do not have such issues. And here we just list uh, the, uh, the uh, requirements for the record and also uh, the regulations and the laws and the, uh, web, uh, the, the, the website uh, for the uh, for, for, for the for the for the law for the uh, record systems. Uh, now uh, I focus. Uh, make some. Maybe, uh, maybe Betty. Uh, sorry, sorry for the interruption, Betty. Maybe I think uh, we can dedicate uh, five minutes for for to see if there are some questions uh, from the audience uh, on this part at least. Uh, in yeah. the next part, we're moving into specific certification schemes. It's going to be much more detailed than it already is. So if there are any questions from the audience, uh, maybe we can take a few questions now. Um, also, a, a reminder that we are going to share also the slides um, with all the participants at the end of this. So, so if there is any link you're interested in, you can, uh, don't worry, we will, we will show you the slides. Um, maybe I have one question. Uh, I, I have one question here. Um, we mentioned you mentioned all these standards, voluntary, mandatory, local sector. Uh, you know a lot of standards. How can you basically find? Uh, how can I know which which standard an SME? How can an SME identify the standard that they need to follow? Is there you know a platform or, or any any easy um, way to do it? Uh, unfortunately, it is quite complicated uh, in the Chinese standardization systems. Uh, uh, so it is quite, it is um, not very uh, easy to find the uh, uh, applicable standards. Uh, but fortunately, they have the uh, China standards uh, platform. Uh, it is, for the thing is, it is in Chinese language. Uh, uh, and, uh, uh, but, uh, but I believe that. Uh, um, for the SME, you can contact, for example, the EU SME Center to help you to find out uh, or to check the website. Um, I will give you the website to figure out the standards you're using or first you figure out your, uh, your, your products uh, 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 comply to EN standards and you try to figure out the uh, EN standards and the counterparts of Chinese standards. Uh, fortunately, in IEC standards, um, uh, China in, in electrical areas, 80% of uh, Chinese standards are identical to IEC standards, but only 35-30% uh, standards in ISO areas um, are identical to ISO standards. Uh, so I strongly recommend the 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 small and uh, the um, small and immediate uh, uh, intermediate uh, enterprises to check the Chinese website uh, or contact US ME Center to figure it out because uh, even the Chinese um, website is there in Chinese language. Uh, another way is to contact your local uh, um, 
uh, as, uh, industry association. Sometimes uh, they uh, may have such a uh, um, comparison or such information already. So you, you can contact uh, them to see whether uh, the, the, the Chinese standards and uh, IC or EN standards is the same. Thank you. Thank you, Betty. Indeed. Um, uh, by the way, we also have some FAQs on, on this on our website on how to find um, this standard. If you can, maybe if you have time to write the website, website in the chat, Betty, I think that that would be very helpful, the website that you mentioned. Um, yeah. okay. Maybe also you mentioned that um, in some areas, standards, uh, ISO standards might be identical to Chinese standards, uh, while in some areas uh, there might be some differences. Just in general, which areas do you see have uh, the most important differences uh, and which other areas do you think uh, the, the, st the standards are pretty much aligned? Mm. Oh, it is it is quite difficult. For example, even even the yeah yeah for even for the steel, uh, for for the mechanical for ISO products, the mechanical uh, areas uh, Chinese standards are pretty much uh, same as ISO standards. Uh, toys are pretty much the same, uh, but the problem is. One clause can change everything. Mm. Even even most of the standards are identical, but if only one clause says that you have to fulfill these requirements, it could make the the whole product do not fulfill Chinese uh, uh, standards requirements. So it is quite difficult to to quality to 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 quality uh, to quantify of. Uh, uh, which areas are the same and which areas uh, are not, uh, we have to check uh, sector by sector. Mm. All right. Uh, very good. Um, so maybe one last question that I have, and then I think we can move on. I don't, I don't know if we are going to address this question in the next part. Um, if so, then you can just ignore. But um, one question that we often received at the USME Center from SME is, is that, if there is one product that needs a certification, let's say, uh, uh, or, or needs to comply with a standard, but I export only a component of this product, I don't export the finished product, do I still need the certification? Do I still need to comply with the standard? For instance, I have a bike. I don't export the entire bike. I export only the wheel or, or the saddle or, or, or like a, one part of the bike. Do, my, do the wheel or, or the saddle need to receive the same certification that the bike would need or how does it work with components and finished products? So usually the, uh, the, the, the whole set product, if the whole set product needs the certification, the components do not necessarily need to certification at all. Uh, but, but some component, uh, components also need to fulfill some compulsory requirements. For example, the wheel, the wheel do not need to get certification or CCC. It is only materials. It is um, uh, product materials. However, the materials need to fulfill the uh, compulsory requirements of the, uh, uh, for example, the hazardous uh, uh, substances. It, it does not uh, allow you to have uh, this and that. And also the wheel need to fulfill some uh, standards. For example, the uh, the screw, the, the screw, and also the other uh, interoperability uh, pass, which means that you do not need certification, but you need to fulfill certain requirements. But it is, uh, but it is uh, mainly. Um, it, it need to be asked by the uh, manufacturer. The uh, if you are a, a supplier, the companies is only uh, need to fulfill the compulsory requirements by the uh, manufacturer, not not by the 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 authority or the government. Mm. Okay, that's that's very clear. Thank you, Betty. 
Um, if there are other questions, of course, uh, you can always write them in the Q and A chat in the Q and A section, and we can uh, go through them later. So I think we can move on now, uh, Betty. Yep. Yeah. So we do not have any other questions from the chat, do we? No. No. Okay. Okay. I will. I will. Uh, I will use another fifteen minutes to focus on the some uh, uh, concrete examples for the certification and standards. Uh, first, the um, uh, certification CCC, China Energy Label, China Rose, and CB certificate. Why I list it here? It is not to cover all the certifications, but it covers the uh, uh, most of the consumer products. Uh, and also the management methodology in China for certification, they usually use the category the catalog uh, methodology. For example, they have a CCC category and they list about 107 products. And if your products are in such category, you need to do CCC. And China energy labeling, they list the uh, energy using products and you have to check the category and your, your products. And the China rules, they also give such a sense as well. So I go to detail on that. For example, China compulsory certification. It is almost as, as important as CE marking uh, in the world. Uh, so what is a CCC? It is a compulsory for the uh, exporting products and China, China products. And also only for the products listed in the CCC category. Uh, so there are 103 products, not seven, 103 products with uh, 17 categories. And 19 of the products can do self-declaration, which means another uh, another 80, uh, 90 percent, uh, uh, 80, um, 84 products uh, need to do the uh, third-party certification. And also, they have 35 designated certification bodies and 200 and more designated laboratories. And also they produce eight general rules, 36 rules for specific products, for example, bicycles, coils, uh, they all have different uh, specific uh, requirements, washing machine, uh, razor, uh, and also uh, some like uh, uh, harmless of the uh, motorcycle, a lot of things are covered uh, by the CCC. And so far, the certificates, there are 567,000 certificates has been issued and about 65 uh, companies have got CCC. So it means how many, uh, there's a lot, there's a lot of products uh, covered by CCC. And first, uh, the CCC conformity assessment me uh, method model is a third party certification plus self-declaration A and B. Uh, a we, uh, B means that you have to do the test in designated CCC labs. And then after you pass to the uh, uh, testing, you can do self-declaration. Or you can do the test in any labs that is uh, accredited by CNAS. Like if your, 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 uh, your company have your own testing lab, which are accredited by CNAS, you can also do the test and do the self-declaration. Otherwise, you have to find a CNAS uh, accredited labs in your country or in China to do the testing. Uh, it covers seven products for declaration A and 12 for declaration B and other 84 products you need to do third party certification with the uh, Chinese uh, certification bodies. So Chinese certifica certification bodies is similar with notified bodies of uh, Europe. Um, and uh, and they, they can do several uh, different uh, uh, certifications. And the process are the uh, application, the sampling and testing, the factory inspection, and the certification of uh, approval on certification results, the follow-up supervision, and the review. So basically here, the core, the, the most difficult, the key part is the factory inspection. So you always see that some of the uh, CCC inspectors went to Europe to do the factory inspection. 
and also it has the uh, technical document uh, documentation. Uh, so you can see that um, it is uh, uh, apart from the certification bodies uh, uh, scheme, other international or foreign schemes are not recognized in China. So CE marking is not workable in China. And uh, so, uh, some uh, when you do the technical documentary here, I make some uh, uh, advice here, but the process is quite complicated and need a lot of uh, efforts on doing so. Here is a CCC uh, useful links uh, like a, a CCC scope, like uh, uh, labs uh, and certification bodies, and also self declaration registrations. Uh, and also, since they publish uh, HS code and CCC category comparison uh, forms uh, uh, in Chinese language, uh, and um, we can find the English uh, uh, version uh, on some of the uh, uh, company's website, I believe. I can find that uh, and to see whether I can share with you. And the second is the energy label. Energy label. Uh, by the way, sorry, sorry, Betty, to interrupt again. Uh, I know, don't, don't hate me, please. But I would just like to, 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 to say that uh, we have some guidelines on the CCC, which, by the way, were done together with uh, Betty <laughs> uh, in December mm. 2020. And there is a list of all these products that need CCC, including self declaration A, B, or um, I'll share yeah. the link in the chat. Um, these guidelines are free. You can find all the products there. And um, yeah, that's it. Sorry, yeah. Betty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, no problems because CCC is uh, complicated and you, we need another two hours to talk, two or more hours to talk about CCC. Uh, I, I just give you some, uh, and also uh, China uh, energy labeling is the same thing. I just give you the uh, uh, a feeling about 42 products are covered by energy efficiency label. Uh, it is uh, similar with uh, European Eco Design Directives. Uh, but the product category are uh, a bit different. Uh, di different. Um, uh, we, we, we also have the category. Uh, and the, uh, fortunately, the uh, certification scheme is self-declaration. Uh, you, you, you only need to test your own energy efficiency uh, grade and find out the one, two, three, four, five uh, grade you, you use. Uh, and then uh, label that, uh, send the application to the certification bodies in China, and then they will send you the energy label. Um, so it is quite, it is uh, compared to CCC energy label uh, is quite easy, but you still need to uh, fulfill the requirements uh, to, to avoid the future market surveillance uh, uh, issues. China rules. China rose is similar with the EU rose. It started from 2016, but now it has a uh, 2018. They have a China rose two, and they have uh, the uh, first batch of categories uh, for the uh, standard achieving uh, products, uh, and also the conformity assessment systems are introduced to the China rose two now. So basically. Uh, the products under 1,500 volts in DC and 1,000 volts in AC are all covered by China rules. The exemption are the uh, transportation products, uh, the automotive products, uh, and also like aviation products or whatever. So basically consumer products, consumer products with such uh, voltage and uh, with such a voltage scope are all need to do the China rules. And China those requirements are six uh, uh, hazarded subsidences and they have the uh, requirements. And the conclusion is, uh, China rules, the requirements are similar as EU rules, but they have different label or marking systems. So first they have a self-declaration, which means that if your products are not uh, in the category, your, your products are in the scope, but not in the uh, uh, standards achieving category, you can 
exceed the required limitation of the heritage subsynthesis and do self-declaration. But if your products are in the category of this one, the, uh, standard, the standard achieving restrictions of heritage subsynthesis, uh, which covers about 12 products, I remember, like uh, printers, phones, or, or similar things. If your products are in this category, which means you have to uh, fulfill the uh, limits of restricted uh, subsynthesis, and you have to have the green uh, certification of the certifi certi uh, certification bodies. Um, which also means that China laws will become more and more strict uh, in the future. And the labeling are here. Green means that your products are under the limited requirements of the hazarded subsistences. Orange means your products can hire with more lead, with more hazarded subsistences than the requirement but you can still uh, sell that in China. Only the products that are listed in the standard achieving category, you have to have only green label, only have limited compulsory requirements. And useful link are linked here. Uh, so for the future uh, use and I, uh, I see CB scheme, CB scheme can recognize in China. So if you have your CB report or CB certification, it's better to attach it with your application for CCC, uh, which will save a lot of amount, not a lot, but at least some money of uh, testing, but a lot of time of testing. The practical guidelines, first you have to, be familiar with Chinese systems of market access and the um, uh, the documents uh, documentation you need to know about licensing mark and certification and pay close attention to the details and do not ship a product before all license or certification are secured and before all labels and marks are prepared. Uh, some SME we may ask me, I have been ordered by the uh, internet of a customer of one or two products. Can I send them to them without any licensing or certification or marks? The answer basically is yes. One, two, three, it doesn't matter. Sometimes the, the customs or the market surveillance do not check. But if you ship a lot of products, you have to prepare for that. And also be aware of the standards. So check the standards. And also the compliance of EU does not necessarily imply compliance in China. So despite many of the cases are the same, but uh, I have to see that China are uh, going uh, similar with Europe uh, in, in the next few, few years, more and more Chinese uh, uh, compliance requirements are as same as uh, EU requirements. But now it is not the same yet. And uh, also the, uh, the, the system requires uh, expertise. So, so some SME are confused or, or have a lot of difficulties of doing this. Uh, so sometimes we strongly recommend you need some um, expert expertise in Chinese or, or in, in the ground of China and uh, uh, EU SME Center obviously is a, is a very good uh, contact point for you uh, because uh, first Chinese language send and a lot of documents, a lot of requirements. And if you get a fake CCC and you ship your products to China, and it turned out that the customer refused you to enter Chinese market and you have to give up all your products. There's a lot of cost, a lot of uh, loss uh, of your product. And finally, uh, you have to, uh, before you, you make 
products to China, you have to consider the market access. Uh, I, I've been asked many times by the uh, SMEs in Europe. They see that uh, we produce one product and a, uh, we, we only can check whether it can fulfill the Chinese uh, requirements or not, because we currently do not have specific uh, design or, or manufacturing lines for China. But China is a very big market. If you want to ship your uh, products to China, the first way is to check whether your current, your existing products fulfill the Chinese requirements or not. Otherwise, you have to redesign or reproduce the products that can fulfill uh, the Chinese market requirements. Some examples. Uh, First, how to identify standards, just like the European directives or the CE market requirements. You have a horizontal standards, roles, uh, product safety, EMC, energy efficiency, and you may have the product uh, specific standards, product A, B, C, D, and E. This is not only for the products, it is also similar requirements for the certification. Here is a one a solid example of a washing machine. For example, the washing machine have to fulfill CCCA, release to the standards, and the process are far more than the standards themselves. And China Rose released the standards here and also the requirements on the link. Uh, and also uh, energy label, the washing machine also need to do the energy label. And also other, other standards like a product label, you have to the the product packaging, the product to use the menu, different requirements may have different standards or different um, links on, on here. So uh, there's also more. Uh, if your washing machine have the remote control or have a radio system, you also need to uh, fulfill the wireless uh, management rule in China. So it really depends on your products. And, uh, uh, and also we may have uh, some simple one like uh, electrical razor. It is uh, uh, subject to rules and subject to compulsory standards A and B and also voluntary standards. It does not need uh, other uh, certifications at this moment. Uh, and also uh, it really depends on you whether you want to get like uh, example, for example, uh, green products or any other requirements. So that is all for today. And I hope that uh, it, answers all, all your puzzles or, 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 or rather make you even more confused for the Chinese uh, product safety requirements. And I hope that uh, in the future, if you have more questions, you can still contact us uh, for, the, uh, for, 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 the, for the for the issues. Uh, thank you for, for, your, for your time. And uh, uh, this is a presentation for today. Thank you very much, Betty, for, for the very detailed and comprehensive presentation. Again, um, CCC, all these certification schemes, we could speak for, I don't know, two hours or four hours on each of them. But, but I think this was a very uh, concise um, overview of, of the general uh, aspects. Of course, if there are other questions on details, um, you know, let, let us know. In fact, I have one. <laughs> for you mm -hmm. uh, on sure. this, uh, well, not only on CCC, but I think it applies to any uh, of these uh, certification schemes. So you mentioned that uh, factory inspections are needed in Europe. Some Chinese inspectors will need to travel to Europe to, to check the premises of, of the manufacturing um, establishment. So how, what's the, how does this happen? during these pandemic times, you know, people cannot travel anymore. How, how does, you know, how does it work? That's a very good question. Uh, uh, China have introduced the, uh, the uh, video inspection or on-site or, or, or visual inspection uh, during the pandemic. So uh, you contact, they will contact you and see uh, do the um it's like a webinar like a teleconference you they will check this and that uh but it really depends on the certification bodies um but they do offer some uh, uh 
uh, convenient uh, uh, inspections uh, during the pandemics. Mm. All right, uh, that, that's, that's good to know. Otherwise, I think there wouldn't be many, many possibilities to do this. Another, another thing uh, which we, uh, we, we received this question in a couple of occasions. So some companies ask us um, if I have to do type tests in a laboratory or, or is there any certification body which has branches in Europe or, or, or something like so that basically you can do it in Europe and you don't need to send samples to China or... Yeah, yeah. it really depends. It really depends. Some of the certifications, the big ones like CQC, they have their uh, branches I re uh, or CCIC. I remember, I remember the CCIC, uh, the, they have the branches in London and in Holland. Uh, and one in Germany. Uh, so basically, and also, uh, uh, I, I also heard a lot of laboratories try to sign contract uh, with the Chinese uh, uh, certification bodies. Uh, so the certification bodies can entrust the uh, laboratory to do the test uh, locally. Uh, but it really depends on which products uh, you are shipping and also uh, which certification body and also where you are. So uh, mm, some of them do have uh, the laboratory uh, interest to some laboratories in uh, Europe already. Some do not. Okay, very good. Thank you, Betty. Um, another question on, on labels and, and, and this marking. Um, how does, uh, again, I, I'm, not, I'm not an expert in this, in this sector, but uh, in other sectors, the labels can just be, uh, can either be printed on the packaging or can be sticked on it. Um, how, how does it work for these products? Uh, do you need to print it basically to have a specific packaging with the Chinese labels and marks printed on it, or you can just stick on it on, on the oh, packaging? It, 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 they are all fine. If you stick okay. that cover, the you, you make a Chinese uh, language same with uh, product's name, product usage, product warning, all the necessary information in Chinese language and put it on your uh you on, on your english or on, on your package that will be okay some of them just to uh put on the uh, english one some are with english and with chinese uh okay. both are fun both are fun but you have to do that before you enter the uh, chinese custom okay so okay right um but 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 let's say if your product uh, arrives in a, in a free trade zone in China, so it does, it's not yeah. clear. From yeah, that's very special. Together. In the free okay. trade zone, you can do the staking. Okay. You, you, can, you can ship there and ask if you are small SME. You can ask some company to do the staking uh, in the storage in the free trade zone for you. Hmm. Okay, yeah, because uh, as a reminder, free trade zones are not uh, within the customs, um, uh, do not consider customs clear, like uh, warehouses in, in the free trade zones have not been cleared by the customs, so, yeah. so, um, so yeah, all right, um, I don't know if there are questions, other questions from the uh, audience, if so, um, this is your opportunity. Um, to ask questions. If uh, not, then maybe I'll take this occasion to ask you another question, Betty. <laughs> um, yeah, no problem. Which is, which is about, uh, in the first part of your presentation, you mentioned these voluntary standards and mandatory standards, which uh, if I understand correctly, the, the difference is that voluntary standards are not supposed to be mandatory, obviously, um, but sometimes they can be uh, used in, in some certification schemes or in other, in other regulations. 
Um, so if this is correct, maybe, I don't know if you can elaborate a little bit more on this. Um, maybe also if you have some concrete examples, because I think this is a very interesting issue. And also how to find such cases of, of voluntary it, standards. Yeah. It is quite easy. Uh, currently in China, uh, the Chinese uh, new standardization law says only national standards can be mandatory. Uh, so the uh, some of the standards, um, for example, CCC, CCC, they use the um, uh, standards. And uh, I didn't check now, but I remember two years before, there are several uh, GBT and JB standards, which are voluntary, are referenced by CCC. CCC is a compulsory, and if it references some voluntary standards, it, 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 it we make the voluntary standards de facto mandatory. This is this is how they they do the how it becomes mandatory in China. Okay, and are, are such cases frequent according to your? I think knowledge? it's uh, more and more. It, it it will more and more uh more more and more aware of such issues, uh so uh, re, uh so um it will not increase the, the cases will decrease in in some okay. in some yeah yeah okay that that's great <laughs> that's yeah. indeed a positive development because we complain a lot already. Yeah. <laughs> All right, <laughs> so so great to see that your complaints are listened to. Yeah. Uh, all right. I mean, I, I don't see all the questions, to be honest. Um, if if there are, again, all the questions, we still have a couple of minutes of time to, to, to answer them. Otherwise, you can write to us in the next days, in the next weeks. If you have questions uh, on, on specific aspects, you can write to us. You can write to Betty directly or we will put in touch with Betty. Um, but let us know. We are here for, for, for you, basically, to answer your questions. Um, so maybe, uh, Betty, if you can uh, stop sharing your screen, I will have one last slide for me. Great. Um, so this is it. So yeah, we have, um, we would really appreciate if, if you could spend one or two minutes of your time to fill in this uh, feedback form. There are, there are uh, there's also an item, there's also an occasion for you to suggest topics for other webinars. We have to do a lot of webinars and, and we are running out of topics to be <laughs> not kidding. But, but if, if you have any proposal, if you're particularly interested in any aspects, let us know. Um, we will uh, try to, to do something on that for you. Um, you will receive um, the slides and the link, uh, the YouTube link to rewatch this webinar um, maybe tomorrow or, or, or in, a, in a couple of days by email if you don't check your junk uh, email. And, um, and again, uh, reach out to us anytime we're here. Um, maybe when the situation gets better, you, you are very welcome to visit us here in our office in Beijing. Otherwise, we can just do online meetings. Um, so thank you, Betty, for, for your excellent presentation. Again, pleasure to have you here again, working um, thank you, with us together. Um, yeah. All right, I guess that's it.